Welcome to this Blender training course about creating a stylized forest environment. Over the span of 14 videos, you will learn a broad spectrum of skills, including low poly modeling from scratch, generating trees and plants with the sapling add-on, populating grass and trees with particles, material creation, lighting, and rendering with Eevee, as well as final tweaks with the compositor. It's a comprehensive environment creation project, but thanks to the stylized, low poly aesthetic, each step of the process is simpler than its realistic counterpart. While I thoroughly enjoy realism, the stylized approach is very liberating artistically. Things like dialing in atmospheric depth to taste, sweeping everything with vibrant color gradients, and leveraging physically inaccurate materials to focus viewers' attention. Overall, it's a very flexible and, well, fun way to create. This course is four hours of general environment workflow, outside the box tips and tricks, and guidance for honing your artistic vision. I will see you in the forest. The first asset I want to create is trees. And remember, the overarching theme for this project is how much we can create very quickly. And thankfully, Blender comes with a tool that allows us to create trees very efficiently and very powerfully. It is an add-on, and you can find it with Stock Blender if you go to Edit, Preferences, and in your add-ons panel, search for sapling. Whoops, misspelled it. So major props to Andrew and Aaron for creating this. It is so, so powerful. And we are going to create our trees with it. So to make sure that you have that enabled. And then in our uh, fresh Blender scene, I'm gonna select everything with A, hit X and delete. Cause for right now, I don't want anything in the scene, just a bare 3D canvas. Now uh, to create a tree with sapling, you wanna hit Shift A to bring up your add menu. And in the curve panel, at the very bottom, you'll see sapling tree gen. This lives in the curve category because it is based on curve data. You'll see that upon clicking that button, we get a tree, um, but you wanna immediately open the options for the operator. Now, this looks complex as an operator already, but look how many menus there are with equally complex settings for each category. So this is a crazy complex add-on that you could dedicate an entire course just to explaining each setting and demonstrating their application, which is not what we're gonna do in this course. At best, I'm just going to introduce you to the add-on, primarily with a workflow of playing with the settings until we get what we want. But the most important thing that I want you to take from this is how to work with the add-on, because it is a little bit quirky. Since it's a modal operator, we don't have the option to undo, right? So if I change this setting, for example, well, we didn't see much happen. Let's say I change a different setting. There we go. And then I don't want to keep that change. We hit Control Z, we lose the entire tree. So not having the undo option makes this funky to work with. Let's start over, hit Shift A, Curve, and choose Sapling Tree Gen. The way I work with this is always keeping a finger on the Escape key. So if I change that setting again, Branch Distribution, and then I don't like it, while holding the mouse key, I'll hit Escape, and it will revert back to whatever that setting was when I started. Um, so really I keep one finger on escape and another finger on the shift key because a lot of these settings I will wanna hold shift and then slowly change them and then hit escape if I need to. So that's an important part of the workflow using uh, sapling. But uh, without further ado and prefacing, let's get into actually creating a tree. One other thing you might've noticed is our viewport shading went black. So you can orbit around the scene while the uh, options are still available. But if I select the tree or anything else, basically any other operation, we lose the ability to edit those options, but navigating is fine. And there's a bit of a quirk, at least with 2.9 in this version of the add-on, where changing some settings seem to disable the uh, 3D viewport shading, but you'll see it come back when I change other settings. It's a, just a little bit of a minor inconvenience. But um, the first place I recommend looking is at the bottom of the geometry category where you have presets. Several of them are predefined that come with the add-on, like uh, 
Calisternon, never heard of that tree. Uh, that must be the default. How about small pine? You can see that that changes uh, the aspen tree. So I love these for getting started in a general shape that I'm after. Now, the type of trees we wanna create are mostly evergreen trees. So uh, one of them will be like a Christmas tree style fir, and then a couple spruce alternatives, one with leaves and one without. But don't hold me accountable for the names of the species. I am not an arborist. If you wanna correct me, please leave a comment. That kind of correction is important. But the first tree that I wanna focus on is gonna be based on the fir example. The kind of funny part is when I say Christmas tree fir, this is not the shape I'm expecting. And so I'm gonna start with this, but then change it into a spruce shape, or at least what I understand to be a spruce shape. And that's going to be a tall tree with a small diameter. And so in the geometry tab, the first settings that I like to adjust are the custom shape settings. And if we hover over what the settings mean, they're not that descript. Look at this base, middle, middle position, and top. I don't know if the difference between middle and middle position are. So as an artist, I just have to start playing with it. And frankly, that's what I do with the entire add-on. So please do not be afraid to play with it until you get what you want. So let's, I'm gonna hold the shift key, one finger on the escape key, and let's see what this setting does. Okay, it just seems to kind of lengthen the branches at the bottom. Okay, we'll escape that change. What about the next one? Okay, so it changes the diameter as a whole. This is good because I want the trees to be a little bit shorter. So let's hold shift, whoops, let's escape, hold shift, and then click and drag to the left. Okay, something more like this. What about these other settings? Okay, so this lengthens the branches at the top. Let's escape there. This one probably does the opposite I would have expected. Okay, they both seem to do the same thing. Now, as far as branch distribution, this is another setting I like to play with. It kind of shifts the focus of the branch concentration, either more branches on the top of the tree or more branches at the bottom. I do want the branches to be a little more dense at the bottom of the tree. So something like this I think is good. And of course you can change the random seed if you want to adjust kind of the settings as a whole. I'm um, actually like the default, so we'll leave that. And I think that's all I'm gonna touch in the geometry section because this is starting to shape up the way I want. Um, the next category I'm gonna look at is branch radius. Here you can see that the OpenGL kind of popped back into place. Although honestly, when I'm adjusting the diameter, I kind of want the silhouette. But um, what I'm trying to do next is to thicken the branches, but leave the trunk the same diameter, if not shrink the trunk a little bit. And so let's just start playing with the first slider, the ratio slider. So let's just hold, okay, this is an example where I wanna hold shift. Okay, so this kind of thickens the trunk and branches all together. I'm gonna hit escape and then radius scale. What does that do? Seemingly the same thing. The next one, seemingly the same thing. Branch radius uh, ratio. Okay, so this one thickens the branches more than it thickens the trunk. That's good. Okay, so I do want the limbs to be a little bit thicker and read better in silhouette. And then minimum radius. Okay, I don't think I wanna change any of that. Um, I'm gonna leave everything else, all right? So really the only thing I wanted to change there was the branch radius ratio. Okay, all right, that looks good in silhouette. That should read well in the final scene. Next, let's talk about the branch splitting options. All right, so at the very top, if I remember correctly, the levels kind of splits each limb again, all right? So it looks much more detailed, much more limbs splitting off the main limb. And the higher you go, it will just continue to get more and more dense. Um, I think level of three is all that I want. For a spruce that's dead and doesn't have leaves anymore, I want this extra detail in uh, branch splitting. So that's gonna be good. Now the base splits, I don't think is something we want because that, Okay, yeah, it splits the trunk itself. Um, so I don't want any of those. I want a, a single central trunk to this tree. And then we have some options like the trunk height. Okay, so this moves the overall branches down on the tree or up. Um, and I do want the branches to start a little bit lower, something like this. Okay, so they're closer to the ground. That looks good. Um, I think that's all I wanna tweak here. You can see we're just changing a few settings in each panel. 
And then there's one more, I think it's branch growth. Yes, okay, I wanna change the curvature of the branches. And we can do that here in the curvature options. Now, let's just hold shift, finger on the escape key and see what this does. Okay, so this curves the entire trunk of the tree and takes the branches with it. That's nice, but it's not what I want. I'm just gonna keep it straight up and down for the most part. What about the next one? This is what I'm after. So this will curve the branch either up or down. I'm gonna make sure that they curve up, but I want them to angle down at their root, at their base. So the down angle, let's see if we can make that do what we want. All right, I see nothing from the first setting. What about the second one? There we go. So I'm gonna make these point down and they have a nice little curve to them. Okay, we're basically there. Um, you can see by default, there is a slight curvature to the overall tree and I'm fine with that. Um, it doesn't need to be perfectly straight up and down, but I don't want it to be overly curved like this or something crazy. Is there anything else I wanna tweak? I don't think so. This looks like the kind of tree that I wanted. So um, before I click on anything, before I kind of close down the operator and accept what I have, keep in mind that we just changed a lot of settings. And if I wanna tweak any of this, I really need to save it as a preset um, because I won't be able to go back and tweak any of the settings we've changed up to this point. So I'm gonna go back to the geometry uh, panel and for the preset, uh, title, I'm going to call this KT, my initial, and uh, spruce, and then export preset. This preset already exists. Okay, we'll just override it. Must have been for my rehearsal. Export preset, and now that will appear in the list, KT spruce. Okay, so at this point, we can finish the operator by doing any other operation like selecting the tree. I'm going to rename this spruce underscore A because we will create a variant uh, spruce B, and then um, I guess leave it like that. Actually, no, because I will be duplicating this, so let's add dot zero zero zero. Okay, this tells me it's the very first original spruce, and every duplicate of this tree will be dot zero zero one, dot zero zero two, and so on. Now, I want to add some small details to the trunk that we can't do with the add-on. So if I tab into edit mode, you'll see that, remember, this is a curve object, so we can't actually adjust the mesh data. We need to convert it from a curve to a mesh object. However, what's nice about them being curves is that we can adjust them very easily. So let's uh, tab back to object mode and enable our wireframe. Uh, the trunk of the tree is the kind of low poly geometry that I want, but the branches are a little bit too dense. I think more dense than what we need them for. So we can lower their resolution if we separate the branches into their own object and adjust the curve setting. So let's tab into edit mode. I'm gonna select one uh, spline point on the trunk, hit control L and then P separate. Okay, then I'll select the branch curve object by themselves and we'll go to the branch uh, curve settings and the resolution, if I lower this to like two, that saves significant geometry and the silhouette has hardly changed at all. Okay, so that's, that's gonna look good, maybe even one. Yeah, you might be able to get away with one level, in fact. I mean, it's a low poly theme. Yeah, I think so. I'll leave it like that for now, but um, expect to eventually merge it with the trunk object. But let's focus on the trunk and talk about the slight tweak I wanna make. Um, so I'm gonna select it and then hit the forward slash key to go into local view. Basically, I just wanna add some splits in the trunk going vertically. That's common in trees because just a simple round cylinder is a little bit too simple for what we want. And so I'm going to tab into edit mode. Well, first I need to convert it. So in object mode, go to the object menu and choose convert to mesh. All right, so now we can tab into edit mode and we have access to our mesh components. And I'm just gonna select you know, a length of edges and first start to rotate them slightly first as a whole, and then start shrinking my selection and continue rotating kind of randomly. But you can see that I'm creating variation in that topology. And then once I do that, I can select the whole thing again and hit Control B to bevel it. Now in the bevel options, I like to use the percent because it keeps the bevel width relative to the geometry around it. 
So as the tree trunk gets skinnier up top, the bevel will be skinnier. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna increase the segment. So now we have an edge in the middle and I'm gonna select that middle edge and also rotate that slightly to give it some variety. Okay, kind of keeping it within the bounds of the uh, uh, boundary edges and then Alt S will move it inside, give it some depth, Alt S. And then I'll taper at the top. Okay, so uh, push it in and then deselect the top edges and continue pushing in. Maybe do it even further at the bottom. Okay, so we've got kind of a crack to break up that silhouette. Now, uh, being low poly and having that aesthetic, we can use normals and specifically auto smoothing based on an angle. Okay, so let's disable wireframe. All right, so here you can see at a value of 30, it's kind of sharpening too many edges like the uh, surrounding edges. And I don't want that. I want that to appear smooth. So I'm going to start taking the value up until we see it smooth out. And then the crack in the center starts to get sharp, but not the surrounding edges. And that creates, you know, a low poly tree aesthetic. And that's uh, going to catch really nice in the lighting um, and, you know, add to the style that we're after. Um, now, I don't hate this, the fact that these are sharp. Some of the uh, boundary edges are sharp, but if I want to eliminate that, what I can do is cut an edge on either side of that central edge and then push them out. Okay, so Alt S, but pushing them outward. And we have to do that kind of reverse taper. But now, you know, that creates an angle that is not sharpable or hardable. It's not going to be a sharp edge based on the angle because we've uh, gone below that threshold. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I think nice and low poly tree like. And then at the top here, we can, it's not terribly important, but we can try to smooth this out. You know, we're going low poly, so triangles and things like that don't matter. But sometimes my modeler OCD tries to get rid of those anyway doesn't matter really at all. And so from this point, I'm going to do the same thing around the tree and time lapse this because it's the exact same process. I'm just changing things like the length of the uh, edge that I'm selecting, the placement on the trunk. It'll be sometimes further up on the tree, sometimes further down and giving it random angles with which to um, then bevel and eventually adjust the depth of the crack in the center. And don't forget to rotate that central edge just to give it a little bit more variety. If it's too uniform, it will show up in the final result. It will be noticeable. And with that automatic smoothing, you can kind of move it to a depth where it'll auto sharpen, which is pretty nice. Though I do tend to smooth out the border so it's not sharp using two new edges and then pushing them out till the angle adjusts. Also remember to taper the depth at which you push that interior edge because it looks bad to just have the whole thing at the same depth. I think this is going to be good. Maybe one more crack at the very base. There we go. All right, we can leave local view and that's gonna be our first tree. And I'm very happy with this. All things considered, it was generated quite quickly using the sapling add-on. We will continue utilizing that for the subsequent trees.